Hi, Dr. Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine again with my ringing telephone, which always rings as soon as the video starts. Welcome to our video series for parents. Um, today we're going to talk about a group of injuries known as brachial plexus injuries, the most common of which is called Herb's palsy. And regardless of what injury your child has may be referred to as Herb's palsy, please remember that these, these videos are not intended to diagnose or manage your child's issues. If you have concerns, we're happy to see your child. Please call my office to make an appointment at 359-7111, that's area code 775. We cannot treat you over the telephone. Please don't call with questions. We need to see you. So what are these things and, and what do we worry about? Well, a lot of things can cause brachial plexus injuries, including falling injuries like falling out of a ledge and, or falling out of a window and grabbing a ledge or falling out of a tree and grabbing a branch on your way down. But what I want to talk about, what I want to center on, are brachial plexus injuries in the newborn. They're not rare. Uh, but they are fortunately more rare than they used to be. So what causes them? Actually, let's start with what they are. The brachial plexus is a series of nerves that's found in the armpit, the axilla. And these nerves branch off and form all of the nerves of the upper extremity, including the nerves of the hand. And if you think about it for a minute, the nerves of the hand are the finest nerves to be found in any organism in the world. They allow us to do this, among other things. And this particular procedure right here, known as pincer grasp, is what sets us apart from monkeys. We can do it, no other organism can. So to lose this ability is a big deal. Unfortunately, with brachial plexus injuries, you can lose much more than just pincer grasp, but pincer grasp is almost always involved. So, what causes them? Well, in the old days, they were caused by what was known as mid-forcep delivery, which was a type of delivery assistance for newborns. Uh, when they thought the baby was going to be too big, they would use these, the obstetricians would use these devices, look like giant salad forks, to help to pull the baby out. They used to be very common. There is a time and place for mid-forceps deliveries, but we have discovered that the vast majority of them were probably unnecessary, and realistically, I don't see mid-forceps deliveries being done very often these days, but there is a time and place. The infants who require mid-forceps deliveries are usually larger infants, and unfortunately, one of the other risk factors for Herb's palsy is simply being a larger infant especially an infant who's so large or so disproportionately large compared to mom or mom's pelvis size that the shoulder gets stuck, something known as a shoulder dystocia. When the shoulder gets stuck, that's a life-threatening emergency for the soon-to-be-born baby. There is a maneuver wherein the obstetrician will help to pull the baby out by flexing the neck down, but that can cause brachial plexus injuries. Um... It's life-saving, but it can be limb-damaging. And sometimes these things just happen in spite of everybody's best medical care. What are the symptoms? Well, Herb's palsy or brachial plexus injury of the newborn uh, it can be a little complicated. And it can be any of a combination depending on exactly which nerves are affected. The most common finding is something known as the waiter's tip. And when we see that, you'll see the baby. And if we can zoom out when I stand up, will tend to keep his arm up against his side, keep his arm straight, rotated backward, and his palm flexed back. Kind of like the waiter who'd like a $5 tip, please. <laughs> okay. Now, if the nerves that are damaged are of the lower part of the brachial plexus, then what you see is not so much the waiter's tip as it is a claw hand deformity and the baby can't straighten his fingers out. So they'll be left kind of cup-shaped. Sometimes the diagnosis is very obvious and very simple to the pediatrician or the physician who's seeing your child. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes we need to have a neurologist involved. If we find that your baby does have Herb's palsy, uh, there are realistically two 
big types of, of palsy. The first is just injury to the nerve, the second is tearing of the nerve. If the nerve is injured but not torn, the treatment is to simply pin the arm up across the chest, palm side down. And we can do that with a sling. And we leave it there for a couple of weeks and then we begin physical therapy to strengthen that arm. Uh, we can use medicines like Motrin to help with the discomfort. If things are really bad, we'll use medications like morphine or codeine. And if things are really out of control, sometimes we wind up using a drug called Lyrica which helped for nerve injuries. If the nerves are totally torn, the treatment is re-implanting the nerves, a form of neurosurgery, and that becomes a big to-do. Physical therapy often helps. As long as the nerves aren't completely torn, which fortunately is rare, usually there is complete or near-complete healing, but it can take years worth of physical therapy. So patience is important. If you think your kid, your child has Herb's palsy and is not being diagnosed or treated, you need to seek immediate aggressive diagnosis and treatment for this. We're happy to see you here in this office at area code 775-359-7111. I hope this helps to make this a little less scary for you. Good luck.